A feud between the federal government and Alberta is turning more bitter this week. At issue, Ottawa's plan to impose an emissions cap on the oil and gas sector. Environment Minister Stephen Gilbeau says that he's convinced more than ever it's required after the company Suncor announced it was going back to its roots and focusing on oil. Alberta Premier Daniel Smith hit back hard in a statement today, calling the minister's comments, quote, irresponsible, destabilizing, investment repelling and ill-informed. She accused him of being intent on destroying one of Alberta's and Canada's most critical economic sectors. Alberta Premier Danielle Smith joins me now. Premier, good to see you. So do you truly you. believe that Minister Gilbo and the feds are intent here on destroying Alberta's oil and gas sector? I want to separate those two because I, I have a good relationship with many of the federal ministers and I'm really hopeful as we put our table together that we're going to come to some constructive approach so that we can reach carbon neutrality by 2050. But I have to say I'm constantly dismayed that Environment Minister Stephen Gibault continues to take shots against our province as we're trying to begin this collaborative process. He should be coming to the table in good faith and he should zip it, quite frankly, because he's not helping. When he starts talking about emissions caps, when he starts putting forward aggressive emissions reduction targets that are unachievable by 2035, I have to react to that and I'm hoping that his colleagues will rein him in. Your statement, as we said, uh, was reaction to the minister reacting to Suncor CEO's comments in relation to deprioritizing investing in long-term decarbonization projects. So to be clear, do you feel that that is the best approach here for the industry? That is a mischaracterization. As Suncor is, is, is part of the Pathways Group, and the Pathways Group has a target of being carbon neutral by 2050. The way in which they're going to do that is by building a carbon capture utilization and storage trunk line. They're going to bury CO2. They're going to find new uses for it. They're going to uh, look at ways of decarbonizing upstream, ultimately with small modular nuclear. They're investing in things like direct air capture. Those are the kind of things that make sense for the industry. When it comes down to their core business, that's what they're focused on. Right. So it's a mischaracterization to suggest and, they're not interested in being carbon neutral. And, they are. And Pathways Alliance, which Suncor is a member of, they've been running ads about clean energy and clean air. Uh, but doesn't this, what Suncor CEO say, run counter to that messaging? No, because what they ha what the problem that we're facing with the federal government right now is that they seem to think that our industrialized economy can run on nothing but wind and solar and battery power. And that's absurd. And I, anyone who thinks that should look around the world and give me the example of any jurisdiction that is doing that. Wind and solar have always been supplementary to our electricity grid. And the reason why Ontario is able to, to be close to carbon neutral is because they've got hydroelectric and nuclear. The reason Quebec and Manitoba and British Columbia are is because they've got hydroelectric. We're going to bring a responsible amount of wind and solar power on stream, but it will never be baseload because it's intermittent. We well, just saw this this week. We've had, two, we've had two times this week where our power grid almost failed because the wind wasn't blowing. That's why we have to be cautious about how much wind and solar we bring on and make sure we always have baseload back as backup. And that, I think, is the, be the better contact to look at, su at Suncor's comments. And I do want to talk about renewables in, in just a moment, but just to be clear, to put a, a fine point on this. Do you fully agree with the CEO's comments and how is that the industry moving in the right direction as you have said the industry is doing? Suncor is moving to carbon neutral by 2050. That's exactly the direction the rest of the world is moving in. They've been a founding member of the path project and they are fully committed to carbon neutrality and that's the focus that the, the uh, end goal that we should all be focused on including environment minister Stephen Gibel. The, the federal government is proposing a cap on emissions and not a cap on production so if uh, the oil and gas sector is able through carbon capture technology uh, you have touted uh, on this program to scale back emissions intensity then production wouldn't be cut in fact it could go up. The liberals say here you're misleading Albertans is that what you're doing? No. I mean, look at what Stephen Gabot's statements have been. He has talked about reducing emissions 42% by 2030. That is seven years from now. And if you talk to anybody in the industry, if he's intent on pursuing that kind of aggressive target, that is a production cap. Because the only way to achieve it would be by shutting in production. We have seen st uh, studies that have been done on this most recently. One suggested that that kind of a, a aggressive emissions target 
would cause us to have to reduce our production by 1.5 million barrels per day. And that is quite frankly outside the mandate of the federal government. They do not have a mandate to determine the pace and development of our resources or, or how we structure our power grid. That's why we're working towards 2050. I have always said that I think 2050 is achievable. Our industry says 2050 is achievable. It's just that the, the targets being put forward by Environment Minister Stephen Guibault are arbitrary, not based on data, not based on science, seem to be plucked out of thin air and unachievable, as well as being unconstitutional. And that's what we're pushing back against. If we can get oriented around 2050, we'll find a lot of common ground. So, you know, I, I was speaking to the minister's office, and clearly you're saying that your gripe here is specifically with the minister, not the government as a whole. Uh, but they're saying, you know, the government of Canada, the government of Alberta, uh, they have agreed to terms of a working group to develop a clean economy in Alberta, and that you're really just posturing here. And if you really wanted to work with the government, you, you know, stop the posturing and get down to work on this. Happy to do that. They need to tell Stephen Gabo, stick a sock in it so that we can get together at the well, table. Well, they're saying, they're that saying that you need to do that. Negotiations. Not at all. He's the one who's gone to China to give well, them advice on how to reach a 2060 target when they are bringing on two coal fire plants a week for electricity. Meanwhile, from there, he is telling us that Suncor is going to face an emissions cap. That is being provocative. He's the one who has to dial it back. And as soon as he does, we'll be happy to have a constructive conversation at the table. But he's got to stop dropping bombs and he's got to stop criticizing our industry. Yeah, just a clarification on the interview that was conducted with a CP, uh, where you know the, co the comments were made by the minister. That, uh, we are told by his office, was actually uh, an interview that was conducted in Charlottetown, not in China, uh, and the Canadian press withheld publication on that. Uh, let's talk net right now about uh, the International Energy Agency, which says for every one US dollar of global investment in fossil fuels, there is 1.7 dollars now being spent on clean energy. In fact, the last time global investments in fossil fuel outpaced investment in fossil fuels was 2015. So given that reality, why would you introduce an uncertainty here into the market? Well, I can, I can tell you every jurisdiction around the planet has had to come to terms with how much intermittent power they can bring onto their grid. And we are no exception. Um, I have had now nine uh, level three alerts in my province in the last year. And that means that the power grid is close to failing because wind is either not blowing or sun is not shining. And the only backup that we have is natural gas. So we know that we have to be able to bring on both of those. We have to be able to bring on base load power at the same time as intermittent power. And that's the reality that, uh, that we need to be grappling with here. So we're happy to support uh, a responsible amount of wind and solar on the grid, but we also need to have base load power I, because I, my number one goal is to make sure that the lights don't go off. Okay, Premier, one quick question before I let you go. We have the mayor of Caroline Village uh, on the program coming up shortly. Now, he recently called for your government to reconsider the decision for a six-month pause on renewable projects, saying that it's hurting the municipality's bottom line, sending a conflicting message uh, when it comes to investment and also to corporations who are not going to look kindly at this decision. What is your response to him? Well, I, I hope that you'll also interview Paul McLaughlin with the Rural Municipalities Association because they passed a motion asking for us to pause because they don't want to continue seeing solar and wind going on to prime agriculture land with no plan for reclamation and cleanup. So I, th I think that we have to be responsible. We have to make sure stability is number one, affordability is number two, and that we have a plan to make sure that we're putting these sites in the right location and that there's a plan to clean them up at the end. And that's what the pause is about. Hey, Premier, thank you for taking the time today. Appreciate it. Lots more to talk about, but we have to leave it there for today. That is Premier Danielle Smith of Alberta.